Hey guys, Level Cap here, and this week in gaming we're taking a look at Black Ops Cold War teasers, Siege's latest event being deactivated, Blizzard's tribute to Wreckful, and much more. Several Call of Duty partners have received care packages that suggest a reveal of this year's title, Black Ops Cold War, is happening on Monday. The locked wooden crates Activision sent out will be unlocked on Monday. Rumors about Call of Duty 2020 have been buzzing all year as more and more evidence that a Black Ops reboot was in the works has come to light. Several Easter eggs in Modern Warfare pointed to a Cold War era conflict and are likely related to this year's game. Black Ops Cold War will likely serve as a reboot of the franchise as did Modern Warfare. Aside from the title, we don't know much about it. Leaked artwork from the game suggests it's set in 1976. The game's title screen was recently discovered in a listing on the Microsoft Store for a game called The Red Door. It's rumored to be a codenamed app for Black Ops Alpha, and some players have been able to boot it. They only get to the game's title screen, however, so no gameplay images or details have leaked yet. In other Call of Duty news, Modern Warfare is currently having a free-to-play weekend that includes standard multiplayer. This is to celebrate the launch of Season 5, which introduced significant changes to the Warzone map, added two new multiplayer maps, a new ground war map, a new gunfight map, and two new weapons. The update has been well received overall, but the new weapons have proven to be pretty divisive. Many were praising the AN-94's two-shot burst mode at launch, but in practice, it's no match for a properly outfitted Grau or Bruin in full auto. A weapon balance patch is in the works for the mid-season update though, so it might not be too long before we see a new shift in the game's meta. Rainbow Six Siege launched a new event that was quickly put on ice, thanks to a nasty exploit that let players turn fully invisible. Mute Protocol adds a new mode with a cyberpunk theme that lets players teleport between cameras. And it offers some really fun and zany action while still staying true to the tactical nature of Siege. Everything was going great until some players realized they could turn invisible. The repeatable exploit spread like wildfire with most matches having at least one player abusing it. After just a day in the wild, the event was pulled by Ubisoft. They're working to address the exploit and will restore the event when they have it sorted out. They've promised to extend the event beyond its original end date to give everyone a fair shot at playing it and unlocking all the new cosmetics. Twitch streamer Wreckful tragically passed away last month. He was a prominent member of the World of Warcraft community. He was also one of the first hyper successful streamers on Twitch. Wreckful's talent for the game landed him a ton of notoriety. He was the top competitive PvP player for six consecutive seasons. In honor of his memory, Blizzard have added an NPC to WoW named Wreckful, who serves as a rogue trainer in the Cathedral of Light in the Shadowlands expansion. Interacting with the NPC triggers your character to say, it was good seeing you again. It's a touching homage to this important figure in both the World of Warcraft and gaming community. Doom Eternal ripped and tore its way through our hearts earlier this year and its highly anticipated campaign DLC has just been revealed. The Ancient Gods Part 1 will take the Doom Slayer back to the heavenly world of Erdak to fight the demons that have overtaken it. The short teaser just gave us a small glimpse at the DLC, but Bethesda confirmed it would add a new chapter to the game's single player. They also confirmed the invasion mode is still in development, a new battle mode is coming, and competitive battle mode is also in the works. There's no release date for the DLC, but a full reveal is happening on August 27th. Bethesda also revealed that all their games being ported to the next-gen consoles will get a free upgrade for current-gen owners. So far, they've announced free upgrades for Doom Eternal and Elder Scrolls Online. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a next-gen port of Skyrim at some point as well. Cyberpunk 2077 is also getting a big reveal, but we don't have to wait nearly as long. The next Night City wire stream goes live on Monday. The previous stream revealed new gameplay and launched alongside hands-on footage from various press outfits. Overall, the anticipation for Cyberpunk is getting almost unbearable. The game has been delayed multiple times and every glimpse we get just makes the game look even more amazing. Monday's stream will cover the game's life paths, which are how you pick your character's backstory. There will be three options that we know of, Street Kid, Corpo, and Nomad. Each one will offer a unique experience that impacts the game's story and your character. 
Dr. Disrespect's return to streaming on YouTube likely broke some insane records for concurrent viewership. The stream easily exceeded 450,000 concurrent viewers. Of course, the big question still remains, why was Doc banned from Twitch. According to him, he still doesn't know. Whatever the reason, it must have been severe considering the doc is literally one of the biggest, if not the biggest streamer online today. Hell Let Loose's weekly dev blog offered more info about the game's next major update. Bullet penetration is being added with Update 8. The basics of the system were outlined in the post. All weapons will penetrate fabric, paper, and glass. Smaller rounds will go through thin wood and plaster, while large rounds will go through thick wood and some brick and thin metal. The system will offer fine grain control so each weapon can have its penetration values tuned independently of other guns. Update 8 is probably several weeks away, but in the meantime we can expect more bug fixes and performance improvements in smaller patches. Apex Legends Season 6 will add crafting, a new hero, and a new gun to the game. It'll also make significant changes to the World's Edge map. The new hero is called Rampart, and she has a mounted LMG as an ability. The crafting system sounds like you'll be able to upgrade your current weapons to higher tiers with crafting materials that you collect during a match. Season 6 launches on August 18th. Apple denied Microsoft's xCloud game streaming app for iOS App Store, citing their rule forbidding apps to have their own storefronts and offering games Apple hasn't reviewed. The somewhat convoluted rule makes sense for keeping scam games off the App Store, but you'd think they would make an exception for services like xCloud. Regardless, Microsoft's game streaming service officially goes live as part of the Xbox Game Pass on September 15th for supported Android devices, as well as desktop and other select devices. President Trump's executive order banning TikTok and WeChat ruffled some feathers this week. Many news outlets mistakenly reported the ban as applying to games associated with Tencent like League of Legends, Overwatch, Call of Duty, and more. The good news is the ban only applies to WeChat. TikTok and WeChat recently came under fire for the amount of data they collect without telling users. And while many social media apps do collect data, the extent of which TikTok and WeChat do is so high that India recently banned TikTok and dozens of other Chinese apps. Alan Wake is finally returning as part of a DLC for the game Control. The upcoming expansion for Remedy's mind-bending third-person shooter is called AWE, and it debuts on August 27th. Alan Wake will be featured prominently in the expansion as it focuses on the events of the original Alan Wake game. Remedy will be streaming the first 15 minutes of the expansion on their Twitch channel on the 13th. In our final story this week, the PC port of Horizon Zero Dawn still has a few major bugs left for devs to sort out. Many users note performance and presentation issues. Mainstream news outlets dug into the port and contrasted its problems with the otherwise excellent port of Death Stranding. Both games run on the same game engine, but comparing the performance of their respective PC ports based on that alone doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Hopefully Horizon Zero Dawn's devs will sort the lingering issues out and improve the game's overall performance soon. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about the news articles in the comments down below. Let me know if you think we missed anything that was worth covering. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.